Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Where well, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Where well, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Yeah, your bones are the earth and they sing. With the mountain Where your bones are the earth And they sing With the mountain Yeah, your bones are the earth And they sing With the mountain Where your bones are the earth And they sing With the mountain Why would you look outside yourself When you have all of the world inside Why would you Outside yourself when you have all of the world is outside. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world yeah, your inside? Your mind is a space that creates your horizon. Well, your mind is a space that creates your horizon. Yeah, your mind is a space that creates. Horizon Where your mind is a space that creates your horizon Say why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside, you when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen with Create More Fear Less and I want to welcome you to our Anxiety Variety Show. I also want to share just a little bit about who we are and what we do. So Create More Fear Less grew out of this simple idea that what we believe about ourselves matters. So if we think of ourselves as broken, anxious people, that becomes our story. That's how we show up. If instead we connect with all of the gifts of our anxious minds, our creativity, our wisdom, our empathy, then that becomes our story and that's how we show up. So for kids who discover this at a young age, that shift can make all the difference. So that's what we do. We design creative experiences that encourage young people 
and all people to develop a friendlier, more creative, more empowered relationship with anxiety. All of our resources, all of our projects and videos are free for anyone to use. Um, so we now have counselors and teachers, parents, students across the country who are using those resources to work on their own relationships with fear and worry. Um, we have students who are not only mentoring younger students, but who are running their own workshops. So very exciting. Um, thank you for being here in support of this work. It really does make a difference to us and makes a difference in how many um, young people were able to reach with this message and with these tools. And I wanna dedicate this event to all of the young people who are here tonight. If you've been having a hard time right now, if this has been a difficult year for you, I wanna change one story right here and now. If you're having a hard time, that does not make you weak. That makes you human. And the fact that you continue to show up day after day, challenge after challenge after challenge, that makes you courageous. So if you have not celebrated that yet, please do. Um, and with that, let's get on with the show. Well, it was around my junior year of high school, I was working on a portfolio for AP Studio Art, and I didn't really know where to go with it. I was thinking about doing something related to like how our perception of things changes the reality of how things are. So then I started to think about like, how do I think about myself and how do these thoughts that I'm having about myself affect my actual real life? So I think that's where I started to get a little bit more focused on my anxiety and thinking about how, you know, if I'm having negative thoughts about myself and what I can do, um, even if the things I'm thinking aren't true, they can actually affect my real life. And so from there, I started to like come up with these images of how that feels um, through kind of surrealist paintings. Put your hands together for Ed Hong. Being present is the most important thing in the world. Um, the past and the future don't really exist. The past is reminiscing and the future is anticipation. And um, with those two things, uh, if they go unmoderated um, and having too much or too little, then that's when you have anxiety, which is extreme anticipation or depression. And that's, that's extreme reminiscing, you know? So um, with managing my anxiety or anything else that I deal with um, mentally, I go to art. I use art as my therapy. Art is literally um, the safest place that I feel comfortable being myself. And um, it's also been the safest place that I feel comfortable viewing others. So um, thank you all for listening. I really appreciate you. Have a good one.
close my eyes was trying get close to me Trade places with Caucasian spread the wealth your life was sweet all them nights you on the scene living like I'm Prince Hakeem painting pictures worth a thousand words but who gon' pay the fee imagine that we all get the same 24 hours in the day so I can't feel the shame if I let all of my time go to waste We all get the same 24 hours in a day So I can't feel the shame If I let all of my time go to waste Go to waste Well, how, how I think we should be supporting young people, young folk in these times is really listening to what they are saying to us and not listening, not like that classic thing of listening to respond, but listening to understand. And there's this thing that happens sometimes with adults where because we are adults engaging with younger people in particular like middle school aged um, and high school age we forget that they have a wealth of knowledge also and a wealth of experiences even though they're young when i'm in a meeting and some kid some seventh grader just says something and it's so simple it's so simple what she said to her but my mind is my mind is blown and i just like say more to that and then they do and i'm just like oh my god can i steal that can i use that and they just kind of look at me like mr williams is tripping but i'm like trust me guys you all have gold you are just reserves of gold i've been realizing more and more that my own struggles with uh, identity started at a very early age and my mind was very active at an early age in struggling with anxiety and struggling with feeling seen and feeling heard and understood. And so for me, I don't want any youth in my life, the young ones in my life, to have that same kind of struggle. I want to share with them a, a better world than the one that I experienced. Next, we have singer-songwriter Stephen Nance. Hi, I'm Stephen Nance, and I'm going to play a song called Disembodied Mind. And like so many of my songs, this one would not exist if it weren't for anxiety. I remember when I first got the beginnings of the idea for this song, I was at a show, and I just got so anxious and worried about what people might think when they look at me. And I suddenly thought, oh, it would be so nice to not have a body and to just be a brain and maybe a voice. And then for more than a year after that, whenever I had that particular anxiety, I would have that same thought. It would be nice to be a disembodied mind. And it wasn't until I talked to my therapist about this that they suggested, maybe you should write a song about this and maybe that would help you process these emotions. And so all that time, 
I had just thought, oh, not having a body, that'd be a nice way to live. And I hadn't seen the creative potential there at all, which is so funny to me now because the things that we're anxious about often lead to such interesting and strange ideas. And there's so much creative potential there. And it's really worth digging into it and chasing it down. And then after you've done that, the thing you've made is something that can kind of bring a new way of looking at those emotions. So now when I have those feelings, I think, oh, I wrote a cool song about feeling bad in that way. (laughs) And it makes me feel a little bit better. So here's this song. I am in trouble with myself again. I am in trouble, 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 trouble. I am in trouble with myself again. I am in trouble, 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 but I do believe there's beauty within. That's why I can't stop picking my skin. Digging for a buried treasure, digging for a way for me to say goodbye to the stranger on the other side. Say hello to the bliss of a disembodied mind. I am in trouble with myself again I am in trouble, 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 trouble I am in trouble with myself again I am in trouble, trouble, trouble But I do believe there's a reason to live That is why I'm gonna go to see in a sieve Get me soaked and squeeze me through Till there's nothing left to do But say goodbye to the stranger on the other side Say hello to the bliss of a disembodied mind Myself away from me Maybe when I'm out of sight to see me in a better light Eyes shut tight Better get this right Every word of the spell To rip the soul from its shell Say goodbye to the stranger on the other side Say hello to the bliss of a disembodied mind I am in trouble with myself again I am in trouble, 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 trouble I am in trouble with myself again I am in trouble. Thank you. Giving young people these tools to help um, communicate what, what they're feeling, what they're thinking, um, and then to manage those worries is just is just powerful because I, I hope that that's something that can sort of, we can give them and then that continues throughout their life so that they're just, you know, more they can sort of approach the world with a little more confidence and a little more understanding and a little more empathy. Some of the things that I've seen at school in this virtual time um, with, with small groups like create more fearless, but also um, with talking with kids is that their ability to be resilient, their ability to persevere, their ability to show up and be committed um, 
is really phenomenal. I'm so proud of the kids that at my school and my own child um, who are just, they're doing it. And I know that there's hard days. There's, we have to acknowledge that there's hard days. I think for kids, sometimes their, their fear right now virtually is, will we ever come back? Um, will we ever get to see our friends? What will this look like? But I've also seen kids really, um, really be proud of their own learning because they're having to take control and foster some confidence and independence that, that doesn't always come when you're in school in the classroom. Help me welcome performing artist Mia O'Connor-Smith. Her performance is silent. Adjust your ears, not your volume. My name is Mia. Dance is my outlet, um, which means that it just is the release for me. Anxiety is a, a buildup. And for me, I feel that physically, which is the message to my brain that I need to move. And sometimes if I have enough space, I can run around in the studio and even if I don't have a lot of space, something just as much as like, just tapping my body, moving it, breathing, <sighs> helps me. Um, I hope that my experience can help you to move through your anxieties in this time. Um, it's really difficult but we 
will overcome it. And we will do that through movements. Movements with other people, movement within ourselves. Um, just getting out of bed is a movement. So thank you. I send my love. And a prayer for us all. Here's a conversation between author Lydia Yuknovich and neurodivergent teen activist Hadley Stanfield. Hi, I'm Hadley. I'm 13. Um, I'm autistic. And I've got a lot of things going on in my brain. And I'm Lydia, and I'm 57, and I wish I was a sea creature most of the time. And I have a lot of things going on in my brain, too. Um, what do you do with your fear and worry? Oh, I have it so often. Uh, every day, um, kind of all the time. I wake up with it. Uh, sometimes I manage to go to bed without it, but then it finds me again. <laughs> um, but the thing I do that helps the most is uh, telling stories, writing stories, or painting, or drawing. Um, I don't know why they help. Maybe it's a place my brain can go besides this, you know. Um, and so a piece of paper or a canvas helps a lot. It helps so much. Uh, it also helps me to go on really long walks and talk to trees and animals and swimming. I don't know if you know this about me, Hadley, but I've been a swimmer for a really long time. So if I'm in water for some reason, it's better. And when I'm out in the world, it's worse. So I try to get in water a lot. Yeah. How do you use your fear and worry to be creative? Well, I don't know if you agree with this. It's a, you can tell me if you agree or not. But if I can remember that it's an energy, you know, like love is an energy and happiness makes you vibrate. It's an energy. And anger is kind of an energy when I'm mad. So if I can remember that anxiety and fear are energies, then I can remember that you just sort of move with it as an energy in the world, and it will change. Awesome. Hmm. Um, what do you want younger misfits like me to know? And how do you define a mis misfit? Well... In some ways, I think lots of people would say everybody's a little bit of a misfit because we all mess up sometimes. But that's not what I mean when I say it. Um, some people just never kind of plug into the social world the way everybody else seems to. And so some of us have to invent ways to be with other people or be in the world or do what we want to do. And... If you're inventing it, you're by nature doing it a little bit differently than everybody else seems to. And so what I wish somebody had talked to me about when I was younger is that that's cool. Like the idea that we have to invent our own ways to do things and make things, that is radically cool. And so that's a positive. That's not you know, I went through a lot of my life feeling like I was doing things wrong or like I wasn't like other people and I never would be. And that was hard. But the day I started figuring out that I have to invent my own ways, that's what artists do. So uh, I would remind younger misfits that we're probably artists or inventors or, you know, the most creative kind of minds on the planet have to do it differently. And so look at us. We're laughing. That makes us happy. It's a good thing. So we, aren't, we were never doing anything wrong 
or too different for anybody else. We were like making the new ways and everybody else should maybe get in line to talk to us or follow us. <laughs> um, what is your biggest hopes for me and other people my age? That more people in the world will recognize your gifts and what you have to teach them and show them, which sounds like is sort of happening already. You are telling your story and showing people. Um, and that, you, you know, your willingness and openness to help other people will help other people your age feel less afraid or less alone. But I wish the world would get better at recognizing how important people who think differently or live differently are to the world. I, it's a hope I have. When we're able to reframe our anxiety as a source of power, we then have control over it and we can use it to propel us forward. It can help us to achieve our goals and expand our creativity. Um, so often we view anxiety as a negative thing and it can be uncomfortable. It can sometimes cause a sense of pain and shame within us. But the reality is so many of us deal with anxiety. So just the fact that we have to move through life every day and deal with our anxiety on a daily basis, that makes us resilient. Yeah, I would say the thing I value most about Create More, Fear Less is um, authenticity. Um, anxiety robs us of a lot of experiences, and one of those is knowing ourselves very well and mostly worrying about fear or judgment. So I think the whole idea of Create More, Fear Less is saying I'm a person and part of me sometimes is anxious, not I'm an anxious person. And through this organization, I'm learning ways to even talk about it, let alone challenge it or embrace it in creative and fun and exciting ways. And I think that's the piece that I love. My name is Hazel and I'm a fearless leader. Hi, my name is Jaden and I'm 10 years old. My name is Frankie. My name is Bella. My name is Effie. I have three cats. When I feel worried, it feels like something's pinching or stinging in my brain or head. When I get very stressed, I hurt here, like in my belly. Great More Fearless helped me realize that I wasn't alone. It helps me feel more social and safe. With this program, it's made anxiety less of a big deal in my life. If I have a worry that's taking over, I use some of the activities like making my worry into a figure that I can look at, which are not part of me anymore. If I do art, I can feel it spilling out of my fingertips. My worries and all that stuff is taken from my body and then put on like a piece of paper. It's really important for our worries to be heard and to have a community out there so we can connect with others about our worries and not feel as alone. Create more fear less. How about these incredible performances that we've had so far? Um, Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from Create More Fear Less and first I just want to thank you for being a part of our audience tonight. Um, by joining us for the Anxiety Variety Show, you're already supporting the programs of Create More Fear Less and helping young people and really all of us develop a healthier, more empowered relationship with our anxious minds. I also want to give a shout out to current Anxiety Society members. Um, Anxiety Society membership is all about being in community with other people around the relationship between anxiety and creativity. It's fun, uh, there are wonderful perks um, like staying connected to our programs and also getting free tickets to the Anxiety Variety Show. Um, so if you're not already an Anxiety Society member, I think you should join up. Um, I would love to invite you to do that right now. It's easy, it's affordable. Um, we offer memberships as low as $9 a month or $108 a year, uh, and you can do it right now. Um, in fact, if you give tonight, um, our major donors have come together to 
match every Anxiety Society membership and donation. So um, you're doubling your impact. Um, and it's easy to do. You just go to createmorefearless.org and the front door of our website is designed to take you straight to the donations page. So I would love to invite you to do that right now. Um, I also want to make sure to thank the corporate sponsors who have made the Anxiety Variety Show possible. This show is presented by Wyden and Kennedy with sustaining support from Fully, The Good, Dr. Bronner's, and Killian Pacific. And we really couldn't do this work without them. So thank you so much. Um, if at any time tonight you would like to give a donation, just go on over to createmorefearless.org. And um, there's also a lot of wonderful resource at the website. Um, so I hope that you'll take some time to look around there sometime soon. So now on with the show. You know, some days it's good enough to just get out of bed and brush your teeth and, um, you know, um, eat food and be amongst humans, especially when we're all amongst each other so much now with no reprieve. Um, and that's okay, you know, that's a win. Um, so I think maybe just reinforcing that every day is gonna be an A plus day. Um, that's, that's where we're at in our house, I don't know about you. <laughs> Let's welcome World Palindrome Champion, Mark Soltveit. Hi, I'm Mark Solvite, editor of the Palindromist magazine. And when I get stressed out, I try to turn my problems into puzzles. Because a problem is something I worry about, but a puzzle is something that's fun to try to solve. So you might have guessed that my favorite kind of puzzle to solve is creating palindromes. Those are words and sentences that are the same backwards or forwards, letter by letter. So today I'm gonna to take a worry word, which is angst, another word for anxiety, and try to make a palindrome out of it that is more relaxing. So uh, let's get here, angst, A-N-G-S-T. No obvious words going backwards. So in this situation, I try to split it into the end of one word and the beginning of the other. So the obvious place is right there, because a lot of words end in TS, usually plural. Not so many begin with GNA, but there's a few. You have gnaw and gnash, which are words for kind of like grinding your teeth, so that's not helping get rid of the stress. But you also have gnat, which is a tiny little, almost invisible instinct, insect. And uh, gnat angst is already a lot smaller than your big anxiety. So let's go, let's go there. So gnat, gnat angst. Now we have a couple letters left over, TS. We need a word that ends in TS here. When you're building a palindrome, it's kind of like a bad haircut in some ways, if you know what I mean. Like uh, if your friend's cutting your hair and then they make it too short on one side, then they have to cut the other side to make it even, but then you go, oh no, now it's shorter on that side, and you keep going and pretty soon you have a mohawk or something. Uh, palindromes are the opposite. You end up with a couple letters on the end, then you have to make a word out of that, but then you have more letters and it keeps getting longer and crazier, so you gotta look for a way to finish it off, hopefully with a good sentence. So, something that ends in TS, we're trying to make it calm. How about guests? Because that's a nice, soothing image. Someone's taking care of you, or you're taking care of some guests. Nat angst. Now we have S, so we'll make that plural, and E-U-G. Very few words begin with E-U-G. In fact, I can only think of one, which is the name Eugene. So let's make this a capital. I guess we're talking to somebody named Eugene. Nat angsts Eugene, so I guess this is capital. So that's a question. Nat angsts Eugene? Okay, now on this side, we have E-N-E. -E. Want to keep it calm? The perfect word seems to me is serene. S-E-R-E-N-E. -E. So serene guests. Nat angst, Eugene. 
And now we have on this side, R-E-S. Keeping it calm, rest is the obvious way to go. Rest, now we have a T. And I can see a way to finish this whole thing off if we say not serene guests. This is a question mark. Nat angst, Eugene. Rest on. Get some sleep. Take a nap. When you wake up, you probably feel a lot calmer about the whole thing. And we always want to take care of ourselves whenever times are tough. We need to be using more of the arts for our self-care and for our mental health. And if anything, this time has really highlighted how important those things are for, those creative outlets are for, for us as a society. So I think that it's important that people um, know that this group isn't just, isn't just kids with, um, with worries, it's it's bigger than that. Next, welcome mortified storyteller Melanie Mosley. I'm Mel, and I'm going to be performing for you an excerpt from a piece that I did um, for Mortified Live. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Mortified, it's a national uh, performance showcase where um, adults come up and read from their teenage journals uh, directly verbatim from their teenage journals and um, we get to kind of celebrate our angst as adults and our uh, our journey as teens. Um, back when we used to be on stage live with each other doing theater live, which will come back, I know, but not here now. Um, in any case, I did not keep a journal, but I did write songs about all of the boys that broke my heart and all of my teenage angst around that. And so I will be sharing with you a few of those songs. I'm listening to you. Believe me, but I can't hear anymore. I'm holding you now. Believe me, but I can't feel anymore. 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 One more drink from this empty cup, and I know you're leaving soon. One more smile coming from nowhere And I know you can't take it anymore oh, Anymore Anymore I probably should have called it anymore, 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 anymore um, so that one, I was at the time I was really listening to a lot of Joni Mitchell and Carole King and, you know, that sort of folksy genre was what I was attracted to. And so that's, that's sort of the theme for that one. In college, I met uh, Greg and he did stand up and he was in a band and he was beautiful and I loved him. And so I decided that what I was going to do was I was going to ask him out to dinner my house and he said yes and then I decided what I was gonna do was I was gonna write him a song so I'm gonna pre-write a song that I'm gonna play for him after dinner on our very first date so that's what I did he came over we had dinner and then I pulled out my guitar and I played this song that I wrote for Craig after dinner on our very first date and it's called on my mind on my mind most all the time and the day could seem easy the night could pass quickly around hanging on the edge of a beginning look out on the east side look out you know the air's new i wonder i wait and i don't know why i don't know why this feeling inside is 
something I know, something I have known before. Well, when do the times change? When do we move on? How do you know what you feel? All I can say to you is I know you're the only one I feel in my mind. Ah. I know I will always love you. You and I will be together somehow. Oh, yes. Yes, I did that. I did that so you don't have to. I did that and then he left. Um, and I never saw him again. Well, until I did. Um, I saw him on television. And he was on television because he had a talk show. And he had a talk show because he wrote a book. And that book was called, He's Just Not That Into You. So I guess Greg Baird was just not that into me. Well, um, so you don't worry about me future-wise. Um, I stopped being boy crazy. I started figuring out that I'm worthwhile as a human being just as I am. And one lovely thing that I discovered is I did turn that anxiety as a teen into something creative. I found my superpower. And what I do now is I travel the country singing songs about my anxiety all across the U.S. when it's not COVID times. So, fingers crossed for 2021, um, and please donate. I wish that I had something like this when I was a kid. When I was going through my anxiety, it would have been amazing to be able to sit around with a bunch of other teens who were experiencing similar things to that, that I was at that time. So, um, thanks, and make some change. Do it. The thing that attracted me to create more fearless besides its obvious positive energy, was its focus on young people. And its focus on kind of dispelling the, the mythology of fear and of anxiety because of my own personal experiences as a youth and what I am experiencing now as an adult working in schools I see the self-limitations that young people are putting on themselves just because they're afraid or because they're experiencing anxiety. And those are very, very real things. Like there's a real truth ab about it with how Create More Fear Less, in my opinion, approaches fear and anxiety. They're gonna almost um, do a 180 and take what's been stopping you and almost use that thing to propel you forward. Like, I appreciate the artistic elements that it's not just, oh, let's write about this. And, and then how did you feel? And then how did you feel? Because that's not how everybody learns. That's not how everybody processes. But drawing it out, what did that feel like? Draw it. Let me see it. And then once you see it, right? Once you see something, you're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, this isn't a monster. This isn't something that's, that I can't get over. This, is, this isn't a mountain I can't climb. This is what it is. And it's a part of me. And then I also think that Create More Fear Less kind of teaches you to, in a way, love, just love who you are, right? That fear, that anxiety, is just a part of you. It's just a natural part of you. And me as a performer, I need my fear and my anxiety to a point. It is what motivates me, again, to a point. It reminds me that I'm alive. It reminds me that I am um, like a steward of life. Next up, dancer Bethany Harvey. 
Hey everyone, my name is Bethany Harvey. I am creator of the Create More Fear Less self-love workout where I um, use positive affirmations to inspire dance movement. So I wanna share one with you now. Feel free to get up and join me. You can dance, you can even just sit and do the arm movement or um, feel free to just have a seat. And if you want to just picture yourself doing the movement, that's okay too, but just have fun and do it however you please. So the affirmation that um, inspired me for this movement is my mind is anxious, but it's a creative force. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the, the phrase with you now. We're gonna start on our right foot and we're gonna do a three step move, okay? So you're gonna step out right, put your left foot behind you, step to the right, and then bring your feet together and put your arms up, just like you're bringing your crown off of a shelf, okay? You're picking it up, all right? So doing that one more time, you're gonna step right, left behind, step right to the side and bring your feet together, okay? And then you're gonna go to the left and you're gonna do a three-step turn. So you're gonna step left, turn to the back and step on your right, and then left to the side. And then you're gonna present yourself as you place your crown on your head, okay? So doing it again all together, we're gonna do it two times all together, okay? Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, nice job. Let's do it one more time. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, and place your crown. All right, nice job. I hope you guys had fun. Feel free to explore and move around on your own. Thank you. I'm really glad you exist and I'm happy to meet you and you make my life better. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. You make my life better too. I'm really happy to meet you. Me too. This is exactly what I needed today. Oh good, me too. <laughs> Must be why I took a shower. 